Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello and welcome to Grow Your Business. My name is Jeremy Little. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Capital Pitch and I'm going to be talking to you about how to get started with capital raising. So there's our team there. And what, I, what I'm going to cover today is the who, how, why, and when to raise capital, who to approach, and the big mistakes that startups often make when they go to raise capital. Now, a little bit about me first. Um, I learned really early on that when a really wise man who was actually dying of cancer told me that if I wanted to get to the end of my life and be able to tell myself that and be happy with my life, that I'd need to be able to tell myself that I'd made every step count. Um, so I got into business as a vehicle to create enough wealth to be able to do good things in the world. Um, I started out opening three juice bars with my brother, went to Singapore and did five stores there, and then came back and started a health food company distributing products out of Brazil. Now the coolest thing about this company was that we kept 1% of our revenue to donate to a school back in the Amazon. So I got to go and visit those kids. And so about 10 years after I set on this path, I finally figured out how to create a social enterprise. Uh, I then fell into some work with the G20 representing Australia for youth entrepreneurship and hosted this amazing summit back in 2014 when Australia had the G20. Um, now, all of that experience led to a few pretty fundamental understandings and that is that it's startup entrepreneurs like Jack Ma and Elon Musk that solve most of the world's problems. And it's these high growth companies that generate about 67% of net job growth and 72% of net revenue growth in our economies. But access to capital is killing them or a lack of access to capital, which is probably why you're watching <laughs> right now is to look for a solution to this. So we built Capital Pitch as a platform to accelerate um, investment in startups or to optimize investment in startups. It's a very unique combination of an investment accelerator, a venture fund, and a funding platform. And the magic is in this six-step process that we've built out onto a software platform which involves a pitch profile, commercials, building your data room, doing due diligence, finding a lead investor, which will be actually our venture fund, but you could find lead investors else elsewhere, and then going to raise capital on the platform. Now, the venture fund is in Australia right now, but we're looking to take this model globally, um, and the plan is to be investing $250,000 to $3 million in, in every company. Now, to talk about capital for growth. So, you want to go and raise some capital for your small business, but the question then is, what kind of capital and why? So, there's three broad categories that you, of capital that you may look for. There's lots of others, but they generally fit into debt, equity, and then this new realm of capital raising called crowdfunding. And there's lots of different types of crowdfunding. So what I'm going to be talking about today is equity funding. So selling shares in your company to an investor so that you can get cash in to then use that for growth. Now generally equity funding is best for high growth companies, the ones that I talked about before, those ones that are going to create lots of jobs and create a lot of growth. Um, now, if you've got a small business like a traditional bricks and mortar company or a retail store, then debt may be a better option for you. Not necessarily. But what we're talking about and what we tend to focus on is technology-enabled companies. So companies that can scale very quickly without increasing their cost base as much. So when thinking about equity funding, there's a couple of really key elements that you need to understand and optimise to be attractive to equity funding investors. It's a specific type of funder, and I'll talk more about the types of investors in a minute. So if you've ever seen anything with uh, a venture capitalist talking, they'll talk about team market traction. This is sort of the, the holy trinity of, what a bi of the, the big elements that you need in a business. So the team involves really great co-founders. So not just one, ideally two or three co-founders that have a balanced set of skills. Um, you might hear the hustler, hipster and hacker analogy. Uh, the hustler is the salesperson, the hipster is the designer and the hacker is the, the product or technology person. Um, now 
it doesn't necessarily mean you need three people, but those are sort of the core skills you need within the team. And then beyond that, you're going to need a really great group of advisors and investors and, and staff that can help you grow. But fundamentally, an investor is going to be looking at that founding or co-founding team. Then the market. So the market has to be massive. Technology investors or early stage high growth company investors, they want to know that you're going for a really big market. So if you were to say to them, you know, that the, the total market size is about $100 million, then that may or may not be attractive. But if they know you're going for a multi-billion dollar market or you're attacking, you know, a trillion dollar consumer market, then that's really attractive because the potential ultimate size of your company is going to be significantly larger if you get a good proportion of that market. And then finally, the third of these is traction. So that's ultimately revenue. Investors want to know that you can make money out of this and you found, you found product market fit. Now some companies start with a freemium model or where they might give things away to start with. That's okay if you can get thousands or hundreds of thousands of users. Um, but but the, the best thing that you can show to an investor is that you know how to generate revenue. So those are the three really important ones. Now beyond that, an exit strategy. So. Investors in early stage companies rarely make their money back by being paid dividends. So you need to find out, figure out how to create a liquidity event for all of the shareholders, the founders potentially included, but to give the, the investors a return on their capital by either selling the company or listing, listing it on a public market. There's a few other ways of doing that as well. Scalability is really important. So having a professional services company is much more difficult to raise capital equity funding than a productized com uh, company where you can scale your revenue like I mentioned, but your costs increase at a, at a decreasing rate. So your profits then are expanding quickly. Next is technology and IP. So you need to have something really unique and defensible about your product that will make it difficult for competitors to come in and copy you. And finally, relationships. So this might be partnerships. This might be uh, big brand customers. This could also be really reputable investors or people that are in your team already. But this sort of this gives you an endorsement wrap. So having great people or great brands involved in your company that will give investors confidence that uh, you can get to a large scale and continue to build relationships like that in the future. So why raise capital? What I'm going to talk to about now are some trends that we've seen. So with, with Capital Pitch, we see about a thousand entrepreneurs every month uh, that come onto our platform and we, we start to work with them and filter through them by giving them content. So we, st we see a lot of trends. Um, and so what I'm going to talk to you about is the trends that we see for the companies that are successfully raising capital. So why raise? A good reason is to scale your sales and marketing. So growth, improving your top line, your revenue. If an investor, if you go to an investor, however, and say, I'm raising capital to hire more people, what an investor hears is, well, you're spending more money, not making more money. So it's these these points are as much about messaging as they are about strategy, that a good story is I'm going to scale up, not a less attractive story is I'm going to increase my cost base. Next, building a scalable product. So you've heard me talk about that already. It's a good story to, to be building something that's very scalable. It's a less attractive story for an investor to be increasing your services. So again, this, this professional services, the best kind of capital raising you can do for a company like that is to get more customers, not necessarily to burn investors' money to try and grow the company. Next, looking for global growth. So investors really want to know that you've got a global story around this, particularly if you're starting in a small market. And if your story is domestic sales only, that's going to be less attractive, unless you're already in a trillion dollar market, one of the big markets like the US or China. A great story again for an investor when you go to raise capital is we're on a pathway to achieve a break even point or cash flow neutral point on a month to month basis. It's a really poor story to go out to investors and, and looking for cash because you haven't been able to manage your cash flow and you've run, you're running out of money. And finally, product development for growth. So 
And, and the flip side to that, or the negative story here, is the, what uh, is called in Silicon Valley the, the features death march. Raising money to build more products and features is not necessarily a good thing. It can confuse your customer. However, a product development strategy that is designed to create growth is a really great story. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the stages of raising equity funding. So it's important to understand where you fit into one of these stages. So broadly, you've got pre-seed, and you can see where the, the graph dips there um, and revenue is negative. And then when you get into seed, you're starting to make some revenue and the types of investors change. So you go from your friends, family and fans or affectionately fools, the triple F round into people that you may not know before, more sophisticated and professional investors. And then when you move up the curve into series A, B and C, you're going to institutional investors, venture capital funds, and you're then moving towards an exit in a more mature company. So these are the, the, the three broad buckets that I'm going to talk about today. Um, and so here we can define for you, as a general rule, there's no, there's no hard and fast rule with this, but as a general rule, what investors would want you to look like just prior to raising one of these rounds of capital. So for the pre-seed round, it's when you're going to have zero revenue. So this is the point at which where you've created a pitch deck or a very, very basic version of your product like wireframes, and you're going to find the first fifty dollars to $250,000 to build your product out and prove that you can actually create something. At this point, you're going for that, that triple F investor. Generally, the kind of investors that will back you at this point already know you or have some kind of relationship with you. So if you don't already have investors in your network and you're looking for this first round of capital, then the first thing you need to do is start building those relationships because at this point, it's just an idea and a dream. And investors at that point will back you because they believe in you and your co-founder as opposed to you know, a validated business model and a fantastic financial model. And generally, and, and this is conservative numbers, and again, not a hard and fast rule, it differs by uh, geography and market, um, but generally you, you're going to raise on a valuation of around $500,000 to $2 million at the pre-seed round when you don't have, haven't actually built much or anything yet. Next is the seed round. Uh, common misconception here is that with your first one, your pre-seed, is actually the seed round. So at this point, ideally you've got some revenue, you've proven some sort of product market fit. So we like to see companies at the seed round with greater than $5,000 per month in revenue. We like to see them raising, particularly uh, in our market here, around $500,000 to $2 million. Generally, the type of investor here is an angel investor. So because your, your raise target's 500,000 to 2 million, they're gonna to need to be able to cut you a check or send you around 25 to maybe $100,000. And that's generally the more wealthy people and often people that are experienced in investing in companies that will be able to do that. At this point, you should have an MVP, a minimum viable product. Um, so some version of, or a beta version of your product that you've proven in. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.